Hello. During the first session, we saw this division of uh, Soviet modernism heritage into two parts. The typical mass production, for example, Anna Bronovitska um, um, used the term expressive. Then Richard Anderson, in his report, used such categories as the typical and the singular. And I think it was a very convincing attempt to show the, their interdependency, um, the connectivity, which is um, dialectic co connectivity. So I think it was a very important step. Uh, while uh, preparing for this um, uh, um, conference, uh, I saw the um, address uh, by David Crowley, and he introduced uh, this term uh, "sots modernism" because I have never really uh, come across with such uh, um, abbreviation, was with such contraction. So it's worthy to use this term, and so this division of sots modernism into two categories. The first uh, category uh, is. Um, uh, if uh, you don't mind uh, it, uh, David. So he uses low temperature or boring uh, modernism. So these are the terms David uses. And the second one is bespoke uh, architecture, like tailor, tailored or individual. So I have a feeling that this split is um, um, going to be maintained. And of course, um, uh, you can feel that there are some preferences uh, uh, for some individual unique modernism, really exclusive. Uh, buildings and facilities because uh, uh, all this typical uh, mass-produced uh, uh, construction is somewhere in the shadow and of course uh, uh, it covers um, uh, such institutions as schools, um, uh, kindergartens and other things. Maybe this is not quite fair and that's why I decided uh, uh, to focus on Sots Modernism 1. Uh, according to David's, uh, um, um, David Crowley's classification. So here we can see this monotonous, uh, um, uh, uh, boring uh, buildings. That were criticized so heavily during the uh, during uh, recent recent years so i would like uh, to show that uh, contrary to this uh, um, common opinion that this is a very functional architecture but not uh, very aesthetic not very arty uh, it's not that functional after all if we consider functionality in today's uh, um, uh, frame of references as a, uh, an opportunity to act effectively in uh, on the market. So it's not extremely uh, functional, but it's very highly e aesthetic, in my opinion. So uh, understanding very cold attitude to such kind of architecture, I think it's very vulnerable and. Uh, Mm, we might lose it um, in the near future. So, and uh, that's why we speak uh, about the ability to survive. Uh, um, so this is the most vulnerable part of architecture. So 
saying farewell to such architecture, we should understand what we are losing. So we are losing quite specific aesthetic program because together with these buildings, Uh, we are going to lose the uh, uh, concept uh, aesthetic truth. And in order to um, uh, show this, I wanted to contrast this architecture to the newest types of the buildings uh, that uh, uh, were approved uh, uh, last year or the year before as the type of recommended uh, structures and recommended buildings. So in the statement of work for uh, designing these uh, uh, buildings, there was a requirement for a variety of facades. And here we can see um, uh, similar um, neighborhoods, but the uh, companies are designed as uh, neighborhoods. Uh, <coughs> things that uh, um, uh, three options are available. Uh, and what we can see in the first place is uh, an obvious contradiction to modernism, uh, uh, to modernist ethos that required uh, um, uh, the unity, the holistic nature uh, from the buildings. So, of course, this is not uh, uh, historicism. Uh, or historicized modernism. It looks like um, uh, modernist buildings, uh, if we look at the surface. But this uh, was criticized as uh, fake or pseudo-constructivism uh, uh, by constructivists themselves. Roughly speaking, when the facade is uh, separate uh, from uh, inner structures of the buildings, uh, it's a, a sort of a decorative element, even though it's um, uh, contemporary. So, under this uh, look uh, of uh, under this modern look we can see that there's a uh, turn back to uh, uh, a certain reaction uh, you know this uh, fake facade thing when uh, architecture had to make uh, an impact uh, um, and it had to be outer look because it was uh, related to imp uh, the imposition of uh, some outer look uh, and it was related to some hierarchy even though it's not imposed here but we still uh, can see the manipulation um, uh, of the uh, um, perception of the uh, viewer so uh, the original uh, modernism uh, uh, design actually uh, uh, brought us uh, to this so that's why it's very important to go uh, back in time to go to the 20s and uh, think about the main movements uh, that uh, were there and to remember the radical uh, questions that uh, took place uh, um, during the discussion and during the shaping of the modern language of architecture. So the idea of art and the declaration about the death of art, you can see um, 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 the uh, cover of the book written by Gan uh, about constructivism in 1922. So it's um, uh, a declaration that says, uh, we now um, declare the uh, uh, fight to art, to art. And so this has been exhausted and now it has to die. Anything emerging after this date, and that was 1920. 
as this landmark date. And he relates, well, the appearance of this work to the first working group of constructivists in Huka Institute of Artistic Culture of Moscow, where they jointly came to such conclusions. <coughs> so, basically, there is no more place for art in the world, so anything happening afterwards simply doesn't fit into this category. So perhaps it makes sense to remind that a uh, very similar position was proclaimed by the leaders of such movement in a theory at that time, which was called uh, uh, productionism. Well, they were grouping around Left magazine. Uh, Arbatov, Lili Brick, Yossi Brick, and, well, the Trucha facts, their followers, like Sergei Tritsikov, basically uh, those who introduced this concept into circulation. As for the term of culture, or culture term, for example, they were stating that there is no art and new culture, but the very concept of culture was also mm, uh, questioned. And in this respect, we should refer to another work which was released, the work of uh, Nikolai Berdyayev, the philosopher, uh, called as just the sense of creativity. Well, he was kind of singing accolades uh, to the all human creativity, and of course, he believed that art will remain, but that will be no more cultural art in its new format. On the contrary, sorry, well, he's stating that art must exist, but, well, the culture should cease to exist. Well, so I think that what's typical of current situation, uh, so that such a uh, radical um, uh, question is simply impossible today. Nobody is putting such a radical question as of need of culture, or the whole existence of culture. Well, well, it may be third uh, on the level of such concepts as communications and language. Well, it's uh, we all. Uh, fairly well, well know uh, the uh, experiences of uh, uh, poetry at that time, uh, where the language was simply um, disassembled. He was, it was divided into phonetic sounds, and the language in a broader concept, like architectural language, for example, is considered as an attribute of this outlived uh, old world. Uh, and certainly, well, the language connects human relations. It's a content for human relations. So the language is viewed as a mean, as a leverage for keeping and preserving inequality. So historically, uh, well, appeared when the society was divided into classes, according to Marx, and correspondingly where you have a community of any kind. You have classes, and you have language, and the very practice uh, which supports this uh, divided situation relevant to unfair um, um, state in general. Uh, as for communications or uh, its uh, uh, discursiveness, well, again, here we should refer to Bakhtin's work, a philosophy of a deed, uh, where Bakhtin, the author, claims that no theory can stipulate a deed in its lively and uh, concrete um, implementation in its 
uh, uniqueness of reliance to the human uh, matter of experience uh, and uh, emotions. So I think uh, in the sense we can refer the whole uh, stage, this stage in uh, development of modernism to the period which can be characterized as the uh, the period of hegemony or prevalence of aesthetic aspects. So again, in today's perspective, we incline to understand the concept of aesthetic as something narrowed, relevant to art or to design or some um, decorative items. So in general, this aesthetic uh, area is already encompassed on every side, or from every side by this disc. So <clears throat> it appears to be like some kind of uh, primary foundation. But at the same time for modernism, if we uh, take a glimpse back, is uh, quite a difficult situation. Typical where this discourseness uh, can be seen as something uh, like an aesthetic uh, paraphenomenon. And again, we may refer to the Marxist concept of basis and superstructure. So it's definitely closest to a basis. Well, and it can be interpreted in uh, Kant's mm, sense when he called uh, in the introductory to the critic of pure uh, uh, mind. Well, uh, otherwise, aesthetic, according to him, refers to anything which is uh, relevant to sensual experience. Uh, otherwise, reality as it is given to us. And in this connection, of course, we may refer as well to uh, certain uh, prevalence or hegemony of uh, natural sciences <coughs> in that period of time. And correspondingly, well, it's getting more con con comprehensible well concerning orientation of these artistic practices and um, mm, orientation to the natural sciences. So then kind of uh, opening the meaning of, you know, subtitle mm, of my report, I am offering such a scheme which might be uh, simplified, where in the top row uh, we have certain categories, uh, uh, well, uh, defining certain type of uh, some kind of social commonality of that period. In the middle, uh, upper middle row, well, uh, it refers to political and cultural systems, the concept relevant to, and in symbolic order, it corresponds to ancien regime, well, ancient regime, well, uh, French concept, otherwise a culture built out uh, hierarchy around sacral category amount, well, uh, some, you know, substan substantial meaning, well, transferred from generation to modernity, uh, based on well, relevant to experience, where experience becomes the foundation, anthological foundation, and of course this is a scheme of natural sciences, and then we may look where in the place of this aesthetic directly perceived in terms of uh, our feeling and sensation of reality, we get a certain discourse and we start understanding that all our emotions and uh, uh, perceptions are motivated by certain uh, structural shifts and the language. And in the uh, lower row, uh, roughly corresponding to the classification on by André Lefebvre, we have classification of types of spaces. Uh, well, thelocentrical space, 
Salocentric spirit or absolute, as it is called by Lefer, modernity is a historical and universal uh, uh, space. And now the postmodern uh, is uh, relevant to uh, abstract or differential space. Uh, otherwise, what I want to say that the very sensitivity which we deal in case of modernism is historically recognized and uh, we are dealing here with certain fundamental changes which uh, where these uh, sensitivities divided from us by some irrevo irreversible way. So after a time, with time, we'll be unable uh, to get it back to us and to get uh, into the feeling of this period of time from inside what's quite well known that in this early period we uh, there was f uh, total you know resetting of forms of education and it's uh, really illustrated maybe illustrated by expression of uh, Elisitsky in his article New Russian Art where he talks uh, about the meaning for uh, constructivists and architects of avant-garde. Well, uh, what's the meaning of Malevich's works? And he says that in, by demonstrating his uh, black quadruple uh, in 1913, he wanted to uh, denominate to the zero all forms of art. But if we go through four, five, one, three, zero, going down to now, then it goes up by the elevated line zero three, five, six, and so on. Uh, and his point of view, that was a very uh, early stage of, you know, birth of this uh, form or shape forming, like, you know, initial, you know, form uh, or stage of mitsu, where the forms are just taking shape. No, well, I had already referred uh, to the uh, uh, language which uh, different give, gives place, gives room to certain experimentation, uh, but that referred to poetic language. But the critique uh, of rejection of any type of theoretism in early Bakhtin's work, we have more concrete in the philosophy, uh, in the words of Greenstein, uh, well, uh, definitely uh, very broadly uh, popular, mostly English-speaking countries. Uh, the same year when uh, the first uh, working uh, group of in Hooker members was gathering in Moscow, well, the logical philosophical, philosophical work of Einstein had been released, which uh, is starting, uh, if the world is everything, uh, like uh, uh, enacting any event or happening. Otherwise, here we deal with the total grounding uh, philosophical grounding uh, of all efforts, well, which at the same time denounces all previous uh, philosophy uh, uh, for uh, raising some wrong uh, questions, creating bubbles. And again, the critical uh, you know, expression of Wittgenstein, uh, where uh, he claims that artistic is something uh, transcendent, uh, the language is resisting, but that's just one of the conditions. And the aesthetical is absolutely, uh, is infinite. And uh, the last phrase is also referring us to aesthetic. So, but the same year when uh, SI magazine was released in Moscow, a few years later, Wittgenstein is designing and building a house for his uh, sister in Vienna which is very vividly resonating with this ethos of uh, uh, Grishnin and Ginsburg group. 
uh, Society of Modern Architects, which was grouping around the magazine, proclaiming and promoting the functional method. Well, functional method is like uh, Wittgenstein was searching for a philosophical language which could uh, very tightly, like a glove, encompass uh, daily routine life of a human without any pretense for its kind of idealization. But after this philosophical track book, Wittgenstein left, then went to uh, a province working as a school teacher, although he was a heir to the second largest uh, legacy in Europe, and he was sending back, you know, the presents and gifts sent by his family members because he believed the sympathetical to be rich and wealthy. Uh, uh, well, approximately the same view of self-realization is shared by this group of architects. For example, when some of the architectural uh, critics was offering to them to let in some expressiveness into their architectural design, they decisively rejected such a proposition, thinking that it's absolutely incompatible with the concept of architecture. And now moving uh, to the uh, um, mass uh, housing uh, development, we may say that compared in parallel to the black quadruple of Malevich, we have now quadruple within a quadruple, because if Malevich's uh, black uh, quadruple is a certain form of communication, in case of the architects, we have something similar, but <coughs> applied to a very um, to the human being, because it's all boiled down, boiling down to a very a minimalistic set of components and uh, deriving well this uh, number of features and uh, typological features to the minimal set uh, they and I'm trying to formulate it not for the first time this architecture uh, by doing so uh, well it definitely diminishes the concept of the human content but it expands its volume and by doing so, it kind of gains the feature of certain uh, commonality. Otherwise, when we bring down all this life to supporting system, bring to the minimum, we aesthetically uh, relieve ourselves from certain uh, determination of our communication experience. Uh, our entanglement in some kind of uh, communication networks. No. I am close to the end. Well, so far I had shown you about five slides. So I just want to say, uh, contrary to the common opinion, uh, this earth is still retaining uh, from pre Khrushchev time and Khrushchev. Uh, recall that the first experience of, uh, you know, massive house building uh, projects they had started in 1930s, long before Stalin's. Death, and so we can't say that majority of the representatives of culture uh, uh, fell victim of this uh, Stalin's uh, pompous style, which was uh, partly reflected in uh, writings of Arlam Shalamov, who was the prisoner of Stalin's temp, and he said, well, uh, that uh, the art is deprived of the right for prophecy, and he continues the a trend of literature facts and he was closely cooperating with Sergei Tretikov before he was imprisoned and sent to the camp and uh, same can be said about the work of modernist sculptors uh, for example Vadim Sidul's works which lately uh, fell victims of vandalism uh, here in Moscow and uh, we can't uh, tell that exactly uh, don't contain this prophecy charge, uh, but definitely they have no hidden desire for any indoctrination of the spectator or uh, attempt to um, 
intrigue and uh, entertain. They might be kind of uh, harsh in terms of the perception, but very uh, uh, explosive uh, uh, in terms of the impact of conscience when he's showing uh, uh, very simple things like uh, a left image, a girl from the collective farm, Kalhos choir. And now a few words about Source Modernism number two. It's a book uh, by Leonid Pavlov and it's a design taken from this book. And in this case, what seems to be important for me that uh, any unique uh, uh, structure like Mr. Andersen can be uh, viewed as a unique type and uh, later on uh, from this design of the movie theater, it definitely was, you know, transferred into the Pasochian's uh, Soviet pavilion design. But here we see a definite uh, in, uh, attempt to put together a very big scale problem using minimal uh, means, which was considered as a big achievement. And the aspect of uh, uh, authorship was, or copyright, was not very important. Otherwise, this experience was considered to be as something to be shared and uh, propagated, although it already contains certain elements of plastic expressiveness. So, uh, to uh, uh, underline uh, the statement, I want to go once again through some images of modernist mannerism or eclectics. Uh, sorry, we have to uh, round up. Just another minute, if you please. Uh, uh, so this is a project from 2002, where instead of minimizing means, we have broad manifestation of the whole palette of means uh, well, uh, at our disposal. Well, the unique project is off. Where, where, uh, they've been, you know, adding up, you know, these huge console volumes. But it was not dictated by specific, you know, uh, conditions of the set. But, well, the whole idea was to give just some uh, originality and some kind of uh, very unique thing. And what's the total clinging of this modernism eclectics definitely it uh, recalls the pictures of modern, you know, uh, consumer abundance, lots of different multicolored, you know, packages on the shelves in modern uh, supermarkets. And besides the examples which I had shown to you, we can also refer uh, and say that these modern uh, panel serial buildings, the, we uh, definitely see attempts that, well, the plot is built out not by, by one big developer, but it was divided into smaller lots, and each was built out individually by separate, different developers and architects, which is a total illusion. It's not, but it also kind of perceived as a kind of a program, as a assignment condition. Otherwise, we need to create this diversity, and diversity becomes, well, our basic uh, conceptual uh, perception of uh, urban environment. And here you see a, a broad panorama of kind of headliners architecture, mostly Western the last decade. And we see the main features are just fragmentation or uh, splitting of the elements. And again, that's a reflection of our modern contemporary conception of the city, the urban environment. And, uh, Unfortunately, we're running out of schedule. But anyway, um, Manfredo Tafuri says uh, that uh, um, uh, this is the only uh, way which is accessible for the city. And the last slide is the work created by Alexander Brodsky um, that he did in 2004, uh, a settlement where we can see this uh, aesthetic uh, fulfillment, this aesthetic universality of the world, which is reflected in this work precisely. And, um, but it has some nostalgic uh, character and maybe the message of this work uh, 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 is, 